Hello, this is YouTube 31 Pockets, and I'd like to welcome everyone back to part number 12 of my John Deere restoration and modification video. Now, today's episode will be on the review of the outdoor snow load testing. So, let's get going. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be starting with our chute and the sheet metal gear that's on the chute that controls it for the turret. I'll zoom in on it so we can see it. And zoom back out. Now, in number 11 episode, we had a problem with the chute control and this new high-powered engine and our new pulley ratio has created so much power and force and turbulence on our chute, it damaged it right at this point and it caused it to buckle up and so it no longer meets our adjustment gear right off to the side so today's episode we're going to correct that Now we're all finished with our welding and repositioning our chute on top. So we've added this extra ribbon here to assure that our gear on the bottom will no longer go out of true and buckle up. So we're going to go to the next step. We struck a piece of fence that was down underneath the snow and it was pulled up into the auger and damaged the auger. And now we can see what kind of brute force that this steel gearbox can withstand. So our next step is to straighten it out. Just about done with our 1032 project now. We have our chute installed and repaired from the damage from the first testing. The accident that occurred with the fence where it damaged the auger has been repaired. And next year when we pull it apart and grease it and get it ready in the fall, we'll touch it back up and spray it back because it's going to get rusty anyway but as far as the the steel gearbox goes from that accident now if that would have been a newer style aluminum one it would have busted the gearbox to pieces along with also mangling the auger so we can really see the brute force that these older style machines can withstand now the drawback to them is that they don't produce and push snow out or slush very well. Now, this machine, if anyone's had one of these in the past, knows that it doesn't push out slushy, wet snow um, the way a lot of the newer style machines do. So we're going to see if we've improved on that. Now, it's about 35 to 40 degrees, and we're going to take it out and do a quick test on it out in the snow and to see how it performs. So that's what we're gonna do now.
inch base that we just went through. And this is some of the nastiest snow we've had the whole season. It's about 35 to 40 degrees outside right now, so it's a mixture of frozen on top and slush underneath. So we can see that this machine really performs well for all the modifications that's been done to it. Now I did have to go through this part of it on slow because of all the weight, the water weight that's in the snow. After going through that wet sticky snow, we're really not going to be able to improve this that much more. The only thing I would like to do is get a better chute for it. Now some of the newer 1032's have a taller chute that projects a lot better and eventually I'll look for one if I find one then we'll pick it up and install it. Where we got some of the stuff and some of the ingredients that we used to improve this. Now the main thing we did was we got this 16 horsepower engine. Now originally I wanted to get a 20 horse or a 22 horse for the project but I could never find one at a good enough price to be able to use and I looked for them blown up broke or in good condition or brand new ones and they were just after everything was said and done it wasn't financially feasible for this project so we chose this one it came from eBay now this engine is called the Power Max when I bought it late summer going into fall and they have since changed the name to a Duramax so if anybody wants to find one they were $354 delivered to the door um, for this engine now our next thing was the major thing that we did was improve the the auger speed to push the snow out quicker to utilize the higher horsepower engine now our original pulley from the John Deere 1032 this is the one that came with the deck I never got the engine with this um, I bought it this was the snowblower itself was a buy it now for ninety nine dollars on eBay and I had to drive pretty far to pick it up but this pulley is two inches and three quarters in diameter where um, the pulley is right here that drives the auger now the second pulley that I used in the first snow load testing is this one right here this is a four inch pulley uh, four inch in diameter now this really picked up the speed quite a bit originally I thought it was 13 to 15 percent but the belt sat up higher inside the pulley which actually made it about 25 percent more and when I pushed the, that pulley back because I thought it was out of alignment it actually bumped our idler right here and the the idler bumped into the belt and tore the belt and ruined the belt a couple minutes after I turned it on so when I went back to tractor supply to get the new belt I discovered that they had a four and a half inch pulley which this that's this one here so I went from the four inch right here up to a four and a half and that's what we saw today out in the slushy snow uh, performing now this has it's nicer for one reason it has a little bit more surface area being an extra half inch wider in diameter but in return we are losing horsepower and it does um, pull back a little bit and kind of reduces our torque down from what we originally had with this four inch pulley now the two and three quarter inch pulley most of us who have ever had a snowblower like this know that this machine really only pushes the snow out anywhere from eight to twelve feet which is good for a driveway but to do a parking area which I wanted to use it for now that's uh, it's not going to throw the snow far enough so that's why we up the horsepower and up this pulley size. Well, we're just about out of time again. And um, I guess this completes our 1032 restoration and modification video. Um, I hope this helps. And I hope you guys enjoyed um, this restoration project. 
Now, I hope you guys stay tuned in for our next episode, and that's going to be on the quick fix repair of a Toro CCR power light. So, till next time, this is YouTube 31 Pockets, and thanks for watching.